Linux is an open source operating system. Now that means that uh, certain files are publicly known. The source code and methods used to generate the files are indeed publicly known to the world. But can passwords really be secure on a Linux operating system? Well, as it turns out, yes they can. Just because the methods are known, the resultant hashes, the one-way hash that a password is stored in, is still a very secure way to store a password. So let me show you where the files are on the system and how they're generated. I'm going to use a virtual machine for this demonstration just because I don't want you to know my actual password. There are two files necessary for the storage of usernames and passwords. The first one being username is in the file slash etc slash passwd. And this file is split out into the username, the unique ID, group name, home folder location, and the terminal or shell. For most users, it's going to be either bash or no login, but there are other terminal types available. Root has a unique ID of zero, most of the unique IDs on the system are below 1000. These are all system accounts. Then from 1000 upwards are user accounts. And you can see for me, I have the home folder of slash home slash quids, and I have the bash terminal. Accounts with no login are literally meant to be service accounts. They're for running programs at certain privileges, which can be used to enforce their limits of accessing certain files or folder locations. Looking at file permissions for slash etc slash password, we can see that's well, 644, that is read write for root, read only for anyone with the root group, and read only for any other user on the system. Hence why with my quids account, I can just go and look at the contents of slash etc slash password. But now the other file on the system, slash etc slash shadow. Well, as a normal user, I get permission denied. And if I have a look at the file permissions, well that's 640. Read write for root, read for anyone in the shadow group, and no permissions for any other user. So I'd have to elevate my privileges with sudo. Looking at the shadow file, we have the usernames on the left hand side, and then all these colons, different symbols and numbers to the right hand side. So they're colon separated fields. The first field represents whether the account is enabled, disabled, or a system account. So an account which is disabled is represented by an explanation mark. An account which is a system account and doesn't have any means of actual access to it is represented by an asterisk. And if there is a password associated, well then we have this long mess here. In order to explain the other fields, I'm going to look at a different help guide which actually has information written in each one because otherwise you're just looking at a blank number. So as mentioned, we have the username, we have the password, and then this field, the first field, is the number of days since 1970 when the password was last changed. In this case, it's representative of February 11th, 2005. Then we have the minimum time required before the password can be changed when the password must be changed, in this case every 90 days, when the user will get a warning, five days, number of days an account will be disabled after the password expires, that's 30 days, and when the account will expire. That is, again, the number of days since 1970. You'll notice this Red Hat demonstration has the number there $1, and I have the number $6. So those are representative of the password algorithm. And there are six different algorithms in use. MD5 is just appalling and very easily to computationally guess or calculate. Moving right up to SHA-512. We can indeed confirm this is a SHA-512 hash if I use this online hash identifier. I would strongly advise against using this with an actual password, but yes, we have the answer here. This is a SHA-512 crypt, SHA-512 Unix. SHA-512 comes under the SHA-2 hashing algorithm, which was developed by the uh, that certain American government agency. Doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. I'm sure enough work has been done to ensure the integrity of this hashing algorithm. But let's break this part down a little bit more. So it's not just a simple hash, a one round of hashing. No, there's a little bit more to it than that. What we have is a random salt. A salt is added to a password to ensure the resultant hash is different, and it is a random salt each time. That means I can't just go and look at a list of hashes 
and spots the ones that are the same. So it just makes my job much harder to understand what the password is. And that password is not just a simple one round of hashing. Because if I look at the setting for the login definitions, although most of these should be under slash etc slash pam, it does mention how many rounds of hashing are used and what algorithm is used. We have encryption method SHA-512 and we have encrypt rounds or minimum number and maximum number of rounds. So 5,000 rounds means that password is hashed 5,000 times. So you hash the input with a plain text salt, you get a resultant hash. And I believe you add that salt to the resultant hash. You do that again and again and again, you do it 5,000 times. So it's computationally difficult. It slows things down for anyone trying to understand what that password is. But if you want to see how this salt and algorithm is used, what it can do, I'll take a copy of it here. Just put that terminal screen across to the right hand side, get my browser here. We can use this website here, quick hash. Again, don't use it for a real password, but uh, yeah, we're gonna use this salt here. We're gonna use what the password actually is. I said I didn't use a good password for this. This is a virtual machine and I can use any old rubbish password. So I have a SHA-512 algorithm, an input data of let me in 123, have that salt there from the shadow file, and I'm going for 5,000 rounds. Generate that, and well, we're not gonna read the entire lot of that, but oh, let's get that again because it's gone off screen. Well, let's see, it ends with forward slash 1CKUODS. Forward slash 1CKUODS. That is how a password is stored and calculated in Linux. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.